Okay, our next speaker is uh, Naomichi Hatano. He will be speaking about non-emission gates, fields, non-emission flow, and quantum localization. Okay, thank you, Chairman. And thank you very much for inv inviting me here. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. And uh, so um, this, this is going to be... Ooh. Thank you. So... Um, the, the first part is basically the review of what I did uh, 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 20 years ago, but then I added uh, some new uh, uh, results in the end. Okay? So uh, the, uh, the point of my talk is uh, mostly uh, when you try to introduce no harmonicity, you, try, uh, you, intro, you in, usually introduce a complex scalar potential. But here, uh, my strategy is to introduce complex uh, vector potential, okay? So this, is, this, is, this would be a, a vector potential EA if you have a, vec uh, a magnet electromagnetic field. Um, but I put IG. So G is real, but IG is complex. So uh, it's, a, it's a sort of an a imaginary vector potential. While uh, during my talk, basically all uh, scalar potential is all real, all is real. So it's a different type of non harmonicity and I hope uh, uh, I can attract your attention to it. Okay, so um, what, what's the effect of this? Um, if you look at, uh, give it uh, just a, a first glance, actually it seems it doesn't do anything. Uh, I put G here, uh, constant, so if you have a constant uh, uh, vector potential, uh, if, if, the vector po if the vector potential does not have a rotation, then it doesn't do an anything to physics, right? I mean, it should be able to gauge it out. Um, but so, so if G is uh, constant, uh, it, you might think that we can gauge it out and nothing happens. So what's the, what's the argument? So suppose you have this, you solve the, uh, this eigenvalue problem, H0, and uh, you know the, all the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors for G equals zero. Uh, what happens for G equals G equal not, G not, not zero? And if you, you can solve this equation, by using this gauge transformation factor, okay? And then, uh, because of this gauge transformation factor, uh, the eigenvalues are fixed, okay? So it, it seems it doesn't happen anything. And, but actually, it happens. And um, so if you look a little bit more, uh, uh, look, look at it a little bit more close, closer, then you notice that this is, this is real. So this is actually a real factor up to the exponential. And, and uh, obviously, you know, there's, there might be some re uh, normalization problem if you apply this, okay? So that's, that's, uh, my, uh, that's the argument of my um, uh, presentation, okay? So um, to, to use that in a real physics problem, uh, I first talk about the Anderson localization. What is Anderson localization? Suppose you have these uh, 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 good columns in the, in the water, and you throw a, a stone in it, and then waves, and the original waves and the scattered waves are, uh, interfere with each other. And, in, and under some condition, this way, original wave cannot go outside because of this random uh, uh, phase distraction. Okay? And particularly in 1D, it, it is known that um, it is known that uh, in 1D you, the the wave really cannot escape in the, in the space. So in 1D, all uh, basically almost all eigenvalues are localized. Look, by localized, I mean this type of uh, wave, wave packet wave, and uh, this exponential decay with uh, 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 indexed by this kappa, 
and kappa inverse is the called the localization length, and kappa is the inverse localization length. Okay. So what happens uh, if I apply that imaginary gauge uh, transformation? Do you remember this g? Uh, I, I wrote integral g dx, but because g is constant, I get g x factor, right? Okay. If I don't, uh, if the original uh, wave function is simply a, a, a plane wave or whatever, then you have a problem if if you have this factor because then you uh, your wave function looks like this and immediately and uh, you'll never get a normalized wave function but because original wave function is localized here uh, it's normalizable up to some region okay so this looks like this and uh, up to this point you can normalize it and so it, it can be the, the eigenfunction of the of the uh, non-Hermitian Hamiltonian, okay? That means that it, uh, uh, up to this point, you can do the, you can gauge out the effect of the no, uh, imaginary vector potential and uh, eigenvalues are fixed, okay? But beyond that, uh, that's what I'm going to talk about in the next step. Uh, yeah, basically 1D, yeah. Sorry? Is that okay? It's okay. You're going to talk about only localized states? Uh, yes. Not for the delocalized states, which can have a, I mean, a free particle, I mean, kind of wave function. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you that uh, when I introduce this uh, non harmonicity further, then it, turn, it transits into a delocalized state, but it's not a standard delocalized state. It's, if, you, if you ask me about the standard delocalized states, yeah. it, I, I don't talk about That's it. That's right, okay. That's right. Okay, so, so what, happens, what happens beyond this point? Um, to, uh, I, 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 I tend to do numerical calculation first before um, um, thinking analytically. So uh, uh, to do the numerical calculation, uh, it's a bit uh, hard to see, sorry, but I uh, introduced a, a discretized lattice rather than the continuum lattice. And uh, so this is the Hamiltonian, okay? So here's the hopping term. The hopping term to the, to, the, to the right is greater than the hopping term to the left. So if, if you have a real uh, vector potential, this is called, this, this is called the Pyle's institu uh, substitution. You would uh, add here IA vector potential, okay? But because G is now our uh, imaginary vector potential, I have this uh, different factor here. So this causes the non harmonicity of this Hamiltonian, okay? But again, uh, the random potential here, Vx, it's, uh, it's chosen randomly from different, for different sites, they are real, okay? So this is, this is the discretized version of the, of the non Hermitian Hamiltonian that I talked about, okay? And so the Hamiltonian is now, because it's discretized, and, uh, uh, and th this, this is a, a, a periodic boundary condition. I, I, you, can, you can plug in this uh, matrix into the numerical code, and uh, you'll see, I'll tell you, that there is a complex eigenvalue transition which is identical to the delocalization transition. Okay? So this is the result of the numerical diagonalization. Okay? So uh, let me tell you one by one. So here, this red line, Okay, sorry. So this is the real, real part of the eigenvalues. This is the imaginary part of the eigenvalues. And here is zero, okay? So this is the, the eigenvalues for g equals zero. And of course, everything is real, right? Now, uh, to make it clear, I shifted, the, I simply shift, shifted the eigenvalues, but 
for for this for these eigenvalues here is zero, zero. Do you understand me? Do you follow me? So so that those are for zero point one. So you see. For 0 0.1, it's already non Hermitian Hamiltonian, but you, you can see that all eigenvalues are actually still real. And then for g equal, let's say, g, uh, z.3, then finally I have complex eigenvalues here. Okay, these are, are still real eigenvalues. And, uh, and actually, if you look at them very closely, these real eigenvalues are completely fixed. They, they don't depend on they don't depend on G. While uh, these complex eigenvalues depend on G and uh, expand, expand like this, okay? So why we have this kind of spectrum? And why, what can we tell from this spectrum? Um, this spectrum happens in the following way. So as I said, uh, when I introduced the non-Hermitian uh, uh, complex vector potential, Okay, so this is the this is the uh, gauge factor of the for the eigenfunction. Okay, what what does it do? Again, so for g equal g less than kappa, then it's like this. So it's still normalizable. So in the numerical computation, you can you can find it. But for g greater than kappa, it's not normalizable uh, anymore. So in the numerical computation, you cannot find it. And actually, in numerical computation, you find that uh, the states, these eigenfunctions are delocalized in the space. Okay? And why does it ha uh, So, what does it mean? So, this means that for G less than kappa, you can still use the uh, imaginary gauge transformation and you can gauge it out, the, the uh, imaginary vector potential. So, eigenvalues are fixed to real. Okay? While when it's delocalized, and then uh, eigenvalues become complex, and uh, it depends on uh, uh, on the on the g, the uh, imaginary vector potential. Okay, so uh, just ignore this green line. The, see the red line. This is the this is the dependence of the en energy dependence of the inverse localization length kappa for the tight bind model. That that. That the Hamiltonian, that, that the lattice model that I showed you, okay, we can we can compute this uh, uh, by the method that we, uh, but I developed with uh, Joshua Feinberg. Okay, so uh, so when I introduce g up to 0 0.1, you see all eigenvalues are still sat still satisfy this condition, right? So for all eigenvalues satisfy this condition, and then we can gauge this uh, uh, vector potential out, and um, all eigenvalues are still real and fixed to the same eigenvalues. While uh, when I increase the uh, ve imaginary vector potential up to here, then you can see that uh, in this region, the, the, the um, Eigenvalues uh, do not satisfy this condition anymore, and that's what that's where they are delocalized. And uh, so, so uh, in in this in this case, these are delo uh, these are localized and fixed to the real eigenvalues, but these are delocalized and uh, uh, g depend have g dependent uh, complex eigenvalues. So that's why we have this uh, the, uh, spectrum diagram. Okay. So these are delocalized uh, states with complex eigenvalues. These are localized states with the real eigenvalues. And uh, we, can, we can see that complex eigenvalue transition is actually equivalent to non-Hermitian delocalization transition. Okay, so, uh, so from this, actually, uh, we can uh, compute the uh, inverse localization kappa because uh, at this point, G is exactly equal to kappa. So we can know that this state originally uh, had, the, had, the, uh, cap, had the kappa 0 0.5. So that's how we can compute. Uh, we can know how strongly uh, the states are localized in the, in the Hermitian limit. Okay. 
So um, you you all know that uh, if we uh, extend thi extend the physics to non-Hermitian uh, world, then you can you can understand Hermitian world more uh, better, right? So that's that's one uh, uh, one case here. You can understand when you introduce this imaginary vector potential, you can understand the no Hermitian, uh, Hermitian localization better. Okay, okay so, um, uh, so this, is, this is sort of a more intuitive explanation. No Hermitacity, because, it's, it try, because this, is, this hopping element is greater than this hopping element, uh, it's, it's like you try to uh, unscrew the the, uh, the the lid of the beam while uh, your your lid is uh, stick to the stick to the, the bottle uh, with sugar. That's r randomness. So there's a competition between this, and that's why we have uh, localizing delocalizing transition. Okay, uh, so what happens after delocalization? I told you that it's, it's widely uh, uh, spread in space. Um, um, to explain what's the physics of the delocalized states, I, let me uh, just throw away the uh, randomness and think about this pure uh, non Hermitian uh, part. Okay? Then, Actually, well, I don't go into the details, but actually eigenfunction is pure uh, plane wave. But then eigenvalues are complex, like this. And let me remind you that the current is uh, given, the definition of the current is given by uh, energy, well, or current operator is the Hamiltonian differentiated by the uh, vector potential, okay? so. This means that current in this, in this case is this. So the current is, has a complex imaginary part. What does it mean? Well, actually, um, when I, the reason why I originally introduced this uh, quantum, non Hermitian quantum model was to introduce an effective uh, quantum model to de describe this situation where we have thin superconducting uh, layer, and uh, since uh, there is a uh, wave uh, magnetic field, and magnetic field uh, has a flux line here, because uh, if this is this is a type two superconductor, and if I in introduce further the current to, to uh, introduce this uh, transverse magnetic field, then the the this uh, flux line goes tilted. Okay. And uh, if you and uh, if you regard this as the path integral uh, a representation of a quantum particle, then you can uh, collapse the everything down to a ring, and that's a quantum model. But that's non Hermitian because we have this uh, tilt. And uh, see, uh, in the in this this is a statistical physical model. So this is an imaginary time, not the real time, in the in the uh, in the path integral form. So it, this particle flows into one direction in the imaginary time. So that's why the uh, the velocity is uh, has an imaginary part. Okay. Okay. So um, in the remaining time, I have ten minutes. Fifteen. Okay. So, uh, in the remaining time, I, I'm talk about some new calculations. I recently got interested in, uh, so Obsesan interested me uh, in uh, discrete time quantum walk. Uh, he will explain, I guess, the, about the discrete quantum walk, but let me anyway uh, review briefly about it. So, discrete quantum walk is defined on the lattice, okay? And there are two unitary operators, coin operator and shift operator. Let, let me first uh, talk about the shift operator. Shift operator, so each, on each side, there are two states and uh, two bases, like spin up and spin down, inner, inner 
uh, degrees of freedom. So this L means left mover, and this R means right mover. So if I apply the shift operator to this left mover, then it mo moves to the left, hops to the left. Okay? And if I apply the shift operator to the right mover, then it hops to the right. Okay? So if I, if I, have o if I had only shift operators, then uh, left movers simply go to the left, and right movers simply go to the right, and nothing happens. But uh, so uh, to make it, uh, make it uh, interesting, we introduce coin operator, which jams this uh, left mover and right mover in a unitary way. Okay? So, uh, so what happens is every, in every time step, uh, we first jam this, uh, this uh, side, uh, the states here, and then apply the shift operator and then jump and shift operator and so on. So first, let me first uh, think about the case where this is the initial state, okay? We have this initial state. But if I apply this coin operator, then uh, it has this left mover element and the right mover element, okay? And then I, shift, I apply the shift operator and this this portion goes to the left, this portion goes to the right. And then I repeat it, okay? So that's the discrete time quantum model. And so, so sorry, so, this, so this, is, this is, this we define the next step, uh, wave function in the next step, okay? So uh, here, S and C are both uh, unitary operators, so S times C is unitary operator, and uh, the, uh, the wave function at time T is the initial, initial state times this unitary op operator to the teeth. And so, uh, so, and here, you don't see any Hamiltonian, right? It's, you, we, everything, every details, every detail of the model is defined in terms of unitary operators. But if you insist to have Hamiltonian, then you can, uh, Define the Hamiltonian in this way, okay? Because then you would you would you would uh, you would replace this from, with the e to the minus i h t, right? Okay. So this is the uh, discrete time quantum walk, and uh, so here is the you can do a, a, a computation very easily. So if I put the particle at zero at time zero, and then it spreads uh, in, uh, in to the rest and the right, and actually the spread is linear. Okay, so that's the that's very different from the classical random walk. Quantum version spreads in linear, and another difference is that so here's this thick line is the one uh, the line distribution uh, at the uh, at t equal 100. And so you see the peak here of the right mover, and you see the peak of the left mover. So, so uh, if, you, if, if the, the particle goes to the right very fast, then all other wave elements cannot catch, you, catch it up, and it cannot, uh, it cannot interfere with the fast-running portion of the wave function, and that's why we have uh, this peak here. Okay? While here, uh, all the all the eigen, uh, parts of the eigenfunction interfere with each other and it becomes small. Okay. And obviously, what I will do is to introduce randomness to introduce a localization. Okay. So that's my strategy. Uh, so in the previous slide, uh, uh -huh. you meant to say it it spreads ballistically, like uh, like it spreads like x over t. Uh, uh, yes, um, the speed is is not exactly one, but uh, it's it's it it spreads lin almost linearly. Yes. Yeah. So if uh, I you scale can, it you by x over t, it'll collapse into. If I scale it by x over t, it'll collapse into one form. Right. Uh, <coughs> you can. You you should also, of course, uh, scale the scale the. Yes. Okay. Um, so uh, then I introduced uh, random, ran randomness to the quantum walk. Uh, 
my strategy is to first introduce the site randomness as before. So the site randomness here uh, corresponds to the random unitary. So I introduce, ra uh, I chose random unitary operator for each site randomly. Okay. And then shift operator is just as before. Okay. Then this is the result. So this was, this was without randomness. This is with the randomness. You see the uh, strong localization of the particle. Okay. And this thick, thick line again uh, denotes the uh, portion at the 100th step. Okay. So, <clears throat> and then remember what I did before to analyze the localized states. Uh, to in, in for this Hamiltonian, I introduce. Uh, this uh, left going hopping greater than right going hopping, right? Um, so what I will do is to introduce this. Now, uh, or you might notice some difference here because here, originally before, before here is I did this in the Hamiltonian level, okay? I, I, I hear I did this in, in unitary operator level. So there's a difference. I have to think about it. Uh, but uh, l let me show you what, what happens. So uh, if here is the, so, so for g equals zero, I have a strong localized state, but for g equals 0 0.5, the, the particle moves to the right, okay? It's pushed away. Now, this is a sort of a time-dependent picture. And uh, of course, be previously, I uh, talked about the uh, spectrum of the Hamiltonian. So again, I, I want to talk about the spectrum of the unitary operator. Okay? Now, spec what's the spectrum of the unitary operator? So when, when I have the eigenvalues of the, this, this uni unitary operator, and if I take the logarithm, then that would correspond to the uh, eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian. So here is the uh, numerical diagonalization. So um, I showed only uh, near the transition point. So for g equals 0 0.4 and g equals 0 0.45, it's actually all real. Okay, sorry. Um, I, should, I should say, well, what is theta n? So, uh, Okay, I first numerically diagonalize this Hamiltonian. And uh, so if this is strictly unitary, then uh, every uh, eigenvalues takes this form with this wheel. Okay? So I, I, I computed the eigenvalue of this unitary operator and uh, take out this phase factor. Okay? So for g equals zero, of course, uh, this is real. But here you, you can see for up to g equals, g equals almost 0 0.5, here everything is real. So nothing is delocalized actually. But suddenly for g equals 0 0.55, suddenly everything becomes complex, right? So if this becomes complex, it, this means that it diverges in one direction and it uh, dies, decays in one direction, right? So this means that, again, the delocalization transition, okay? And so this, this uh, suggests that all these uh, eigenvalues are localized with the almost the same uh, uh, inverse, same localization length. That's what this uh, spectrum means. Okay, so uh, uh, let me summarize. I uh, want to discuss a little bit with the you. So uh, I have, I introduce imaginary vector potential instead of imaginary scalar potential. And, uh, and uh, I, and uh, what, uh, what we can do with the imaginary vector potential in this, uh, in these two uh, random localization programs. Okay. So in, uh, in this particular case, no hermeticity has a delocalizing effect and randomness has a localizing effect. So there's, there are comp, uh, uh, they compete each other, and that's why we have uh, localization, delocalization, transition, 
And uh, we know we know that this delocalization uh, transition, delocalization transition, in terms of uh, watching the uh, monitoring the uh, spectrum, where where the eigenvalue become real to complex. Okay, so thank you very much. Any questions? Yeah, could you show me the previous slide? Previous. Yeah, so here I don't understand well. So in, for the small uh, G, uh -huh. the eigenvalue theta is real or complex? OK, so uh, you can't actually see the eigenvalues for these cases because they are hidden under here. Mm -hmm. So uh, all eigenvalues, uh, all theta mm -hmm. are real up here. to mm -hmm. almost this point. So that's what they are hidden in this in this. So point. there is some that's transition we, at the z equal 0.5. Hmm? So uh, there is a transition yes. at the z equal 0.5. Between, between here and here, yes. Mm -hmm. I see. So is this relating to some PT symmetry or to the unitarity? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. The thing is, uh, because uh, in, in both model, Mm -hmm. uh, I have uh, randomness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, at least, at least, if if we have a PT symmetry, the, the parity yeah. symmetry is only yeah. statistical. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's not exact, maybe, uh, yeah, it's not exact. PT, but maybe through the unitarity. Uh, maybe, maybe there's a yeah, chance yeah. to. I see. Yeah. Thank you. I wonder how you chose your random matrices. To, for example, for, did you pick them from the Gaussian orthogonal ensemble or something like that? Oh, uh, I looked up the web and uh, downloaded the file. And so there was a paper uh, who told me that I have four parameters to move to choose the unitary random operator. Mm -hmm. Does that answer you? <laughs> Well, I could imagine that you have different results if you take the Gaussian right. or a unitary. Right, right, right. Uh, so actually, uh, Obsesan also uh, told me about that. So here, here almost, so you see, um, I, I have to also tell you that this is, this is the eigenvalues from minus pi to pi because I take, I take this phase, okay? And uh, here, I think because, because the unitary random, randomness is so uniform, that all the eigenvalues behave the same way. Mm -hmm. So if I modify the randomness, maybe maybe we, we see some some. Okay. And also, what what uh, physical problem do you have in mind by describing it in this way? Ah, so uh, there's a um, experiment in the, of a quantum walk uh, by laser uh, uh, wire and uh, optical wire. And so, uh, and uh, I'm not sure if we can introduce this non harmonicity in the hop shift operator, but uh, 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 but anyway, so so the we can analyze this localization uh, with the ran, uh, random ran, random uh, ran, phase randomizer, and so you can you can do experiments with phase randomizers, right? And then uh, you can measure, I guess, the, uh, how each eigenfunction is localized. And so I can predict from expanding, extending this to no harmonicity uh, that the, the, in this particular case, uh, they are localized in a similar way. Yeah, hello. I had many questions, but I'll ask you just one or two questions for right now. I mean, when you talk about localization to delocalization transition, what kind of transition is this? Is it really delocalization transition or is it like non-ergodic extended state transition? That is number one. Second, at this second question, at the transition point, the usual characteristics of the transition have been seen, like multifractal states and critical statistics, those kind of things. Like, I just want to understand what kind of transition so, is this? Uh, um, I guess you are familiar with the usual Anderson localization, yeah, 2D yeah. and 3D. Yeah. But this, tran this uh, uh, transition point between localization and delocalization is completely different. Yeah, that's it's, why. Uh, it's, uh, uh, 
so it, have you done uh, multifractality analysis at the transition of the eigenstates? Uh, no, I didn't. Mm. Um, I don't. I don't know. I can't answer. You. Because that is a critical criteria, right? I see. That is the. Yeah. Okay, that's an interesting question. Joshua. Yes, uh, so now which, uh, first of all, consider, considering the G equals to zero case, mm -hmm. okay, so... In the it, second part? Yes, yes, uh, the, the random quantum walk, uh -huh. random, random quantum walk. Uh -huh. So, uh, yes, so you multiply, you seem to multiply many random unitary matrices after a long time, so at, on each step you actually perform a, a, a walk on the manifold of the SU2, of, of, the uni, of U2 actually, of the or unitary group. Mm -hmm. So uh, unitary group is a compact manifold. So after a f long enough time, you, you will cover it. I mean, a random walker on a, on a sphere, it will thermalize in a uniform temperature uh, after enough time. Oh, let so, me ask you a question. Yes. So here I fix uh, it, the, the random unitary does not depend on time. Yes. It's fixed. Yes. Does it still apply? Does your comment? Yeah, yeah. You just at each point, at each uh, flip, you choose a random unitary matrix, two by two, and you multiply them through. So after f enough steps, you have performed a long walk, right? A random walk on the on the on this sphere. The SU two is a, is a three sphere. So after enough time, uh, te temperature. Im imagine te uh, heat diffusion on the on this sphere. So since it's compact, it, nothing can escape. Uh, eventually, the temperature will be uniform all over the sphere. So after enough time, I suppose, uh, your unitary matrices are, are taken from the CUE, or what you call hard measure uh, uh -huh. random. Uh, now, when you include the G, uh -huh. you multiply on each step by this unitary uh, two by two matrix times e to, uh, a diagonal matrix e to the G, e to the minus G. Yes. E to the minus, e to the... Not diagonal, but it's uh, off diagonal. Uh -huh. Shift off. Ah, off diagonal, off diagonal. Okay, okay. So, okay, but you you can diagon uh, you can diagonalize it into uh, anyway anyway. Uh, in each step here, you are multiplying by an element of SL two, or oh, oh, sorry, of GL two GL two matrix. So in in a sense, you are performing random work on on the on the group manifold, which is now non compact, but uh, you can still study heat conduction on that, and this will give you the distribution of uh, Lyapunov exponents after a long time. Okay, I think so. Thank you. Okay, last question. Yeah. So this uh, Hamiltonian uh, yeah. Listen. So the, oh, okay. yeah. So the Hamiltonian uh, is just uh, apart from the random part. It's a quadratic form in uh, operators. Uh, in the in the second part? No, the first part. Original, the Hamiltonian. Hamiltonian. Okay, the first part. Um, yes, first part. It's a, it's a free, um, no no interaction. Let's see. I think this one. Yeah, yeah this one. Yeah. So uh, apart from this bx part, that should be uh, diagonalized, right? Uh, the, uh, this one, yeah. this part, yes, we, I can diagonalize yeah, exactly, so. and that's what I did here. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you, uh, if uh, you redefine the operators by multiplying annihilation type of operators by e to the power g, and if you redefine or introduce some new operators where you multiply the annihilation operator by e to the power g and creation operator by e to the power minus g, okay, then the, uh, these operators are not adjoint of each other in the standard definition of a, a norm in the Hilbert space, but if we introduce a metric, then again they satisfy the standard commutation relations, okay? Uh, but what I want to understand is that, say, G is appearing in this formulation only in the metric, if, if I want to think in terms of pseudo-Hermitian operator. So how this critical value of G is, uh, G is appearing there? It's through the potential term? Well, I, I didn't catch the last part. No, so, so there is a two part in the Hamiltonian, right? There's second part also, plus Bx, somewhere. Oh, you, you, you want the second part too? Yeah. So the first part can be diagonalized yes. even in presence of modified operators, where modified operator... Right, right. But, but you, sh you should be careful 
that uh, because because of this uh, because of this uh, modified operator, um, the wave function is not the same as before. Yeah, it's not. You cannot you cannot gauge uh, you cannot have the have the gauge uh, transformation. It's okay, but say, suppose uh, following pseudo Hermitian. Uh, I mean, the way we define pseudo Hermitian Hamiltonian, one can show still that in terms of modified operator, this is a Hermitian operator, but with a uh, modified metric in the Hilbert space. Complex eigenvalues. This has complex eigenvalues, so it cannot be a Hermitian operator. No, no, no. Uh, I, I don't understand your question. This is eigenvalues are complex. Eigenvalues are complex. So this is this is not true. So when you diagonalize it, uh, so it should be in terms of uh, some operator dagger A, right? I mean, so where from this complex nature is coming? Well, I'm not really. Uh, I can't really answer the details uh, of uh, the, uh, the, about uh, regarding the pseudo uh, it's it. true that this is this is a strictly non hermitian You cannot you cannot really have real eigenvalues. Maybe you continue in the break. Yeah, we have to move. Yeah. Let's uh, thank Naomichi once more. Thank you.